HIV is a retrovirus. It enters the cells, inserts into host genomes, makes new virus, and can persist for the life of an individual. HIV reproduction involves several steps, and each step presents an opportunity for antiretroviral drugs to stop the virus. <coughs> the outer shell of the HIV particle is called the envelope. It is studded with sugar protein spikes that allow the virus to attach itself to specific molecules called CD4 receptors on some human cells. The viral core contains two important features. The HIV genome is carried on two strands of RNA. These strands contain only nine genes, in contrast to the 500 genes in the typical bacterium and roughly 20,000 genes in a human cell. The core also contains three enzymes. These molecules, called reverse transcriptase, integrase, and protease, are necessary for reproduction. When an HIV interacts with a CD4 receptor and co-receptor on the surface of certain human immune system cells, HIV's envelope fuses with the membrane of the cell and the virus releases its RNA and enzymes into the cell. Drugs called entry inhibitors can block this step in the HIV life cycle. If HIV enters the cell, the first step of viral reproduction can begin. Reverse transcriptase copies the HIV RNA into DNA, which is compatible with human DNA. Reverse transcriptase lacks the elaborate proofreading machinery used by the cell to copy DNA. As a result, reverse transcriptase is prone to many copying errors or mutations. HIV mutates so readily during these transcriptions that every HIV virus in an infected person has some genetic differences from every other virus in the same person. AZT was the first drug in a class of reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Some inhibitors are altered building blocks of DNA. When they are inserted into a DNA strand, their incomplete structures block further synthesis of strands. Other inhibitors block the action of reverse transcriptase by binding directly to the enzyme. These actions prevent HIV reproduction. Proper use of these drugs can reduce the viral load in the blood to undetectable levels. If reverse transcriptase is not blocked, then the newly made DNA strands migrate into the cell's nucleus. The HIV enzyme integrase splices the DNA into the cell's genome. At this stage, HIV infection becomes a permanent part of the immune system cell and a permanent infection. Drugs to block integration are in development. When activated, the viral DNA is transcribed into many strands of messenger RNA using human cells machinery to make new virus proteins. Viral messenger RNA is exported out of the nucleus where it will now serve as the blueprint for HIV proteins and the genetic material for new viruses. The messenger RNA is translated into new strings of viral proteins. The HIV enzyme called protease cuts the string of proteins into new copies of the structural proteins and enzymes. The viral RNA, proteins, and enzymes gather near the cell membrane and new viruses begin to bud at the membrane. This stage in the viral life cycle can be blocked by a powerful class of antiretroviral drugs called protease inhibitors. When present, protease inhibitors prevent the protease from cleaving to the strings of proteins. This action inhibits the production of HIV structural proteins and enzymes and blocks the maturation of new viruses. Developing an effective antiretroviral therapy program for HIV infection is a complex process that considers each individual patient's health status. Antiretroviral drugs can present toxicity problems and significant side effects for some HIV patients. Patients on antiretroviral therapy must be monitored for adverse reactions to medications and the emergence of drug-resistant HIV. 
combinations of three or four different drugs are used simultaneously to interfere with multiple points in the HIV life cycle and delay the emergence of drug-resistant HIV for as long as possible. Once an untreatable and fatal disease, HIV can now be managed as a chronic infection. Although substantially prolonging life for some HIV-infected people, treatment can present significant challenges and burdens to patients and society. And because of the rise of drug resistance, new drugs are constantly needed.